Toastmasters and guests. How many of you love to play house when you were a child? Dress up, army, anything like that? I liked to play office when I was a child. My best friend's mother was a real estate agent and she was the coolest mom. I wanted her to be my mom because she had a big old keychain with keys on it, so I knew she was very important. <laughs> I get to do the same thing. <coughs> I get to play office. That's the basic structure of Toastmasters. Many years ago, in 1924, Dr. Who, Dr. Ralph Smedley, that's his name, remember it, Dr. Ralph Smedley started an organization to help people become better speakers and leaders. And basically what they did was have a meeting. And at each meeting, someone would give a speech. And someone would tell them how they did on their speech. And then someone would ask silly questions, and people would get up to answer them. That is the basic concept of Toastmasters. We get to play office. Now, when you get in Toastmasters, you have an opportunity to become a leader. Now, how many of you feel like you are a natural-born leader? <laughs> How many of you during college were going, yes, I'm going to have a big career and I'm going to be a leader and people are going to quote me? Come on, I know some of you are going to And then you hit 40 and reality sinks in and you say, nobody cares what I said. <laughs> Unless you come to Toastmasters. In Toastmasters, each of us get an opportunity to be a leader. Two Saturdays ago, I accepted that responsibility. In our district, which is the state of South Carolina, we have an opportunity to be a leader outside of your club. And what that involves is meeting with other clubs. That is an area governor. The step above that is division governor, and the step above that is a district officer. Many years ago, I was an area governor and I had five clubs that I had to visit. And I'm going to tell you, that is probably the biggest learning curve I had as a Toastmaster. Because how many of you have gotten comfortable with each other in here? Do you want to scare yourself? <laughs> Go to a club that you know no one <laughs> and give a speech. You will step out of your comfort zone and you will become a better speaker. As an area governor, you have five, six clubs that you're responsible for for a year, from June 1st to July, July 1st to June 30th. Now, as a division governor, I will have three area governors in the upstate that I'll work with to help them <coughs> help the clubs grow. That is one of the steps that you have to take to become a competent leader and advanced leader silver. So I encourage each of you as you journey through Toastmasters, when the opportunity comes for you to become a leader, whether it's a club officer or to be an area governor or to be a division governor, it's a one-year commitment and it'll be the biggest year of your life that you will grow as a leader and a speaker. I went to many clubs that I knew no one as an area governor. And I would get up and speak every time. And it's fun to watch people either respond or maybe even not respond. But you will learn what works. You will learn how to become a speaker and to try to reach them. The district level, we have a district governor and we have a lieutenant governor of education and training. We have a lieutenant governor of marketing. Under that, we have the division governors. In the state of South Carolina, we have six division governors, A, B, C, D, E, and F. In the upstate, we have D and E. I will be division governor for division E. Under that, we'll have three area governors. Our current area governor for this club is Nasir Qureshi, and he had to take a job out of state, so I'm going to be filling in to finish out his year. It is a fun job, and I encourage each and every one of you, 
not only to step up to be a club officer at some time, but also to step outside of the club, step out of your comfort zone, and become a district officer either as a division governor or a district officer. Mr. Tosmas.